Estonia, welcome to Estonia, welcome to Tallinn, one of the great Hanseatic League cities of Europe, one of the great old towns of Europe. This seems to be another uh, European city where people do not wake up early. No, Estonians are not morning people, I'm gathering, because it's already 8.30, which for me is kind of late to be out and about, to be honest with you. I'm a morning person, as you guys know, a breakfast person, love getting up early. And uh, this, is the, this is the old town square, this is the market square in Tallinn. And boy, it is dead at 8.30 a.m., which is kind of cool. I like it like that, because yesterday the place was buzzing. Um, I like that too, for the people watching and such. But I also like to be able to see cities before they kind of wake up. And um, this is a great one. I think this is one of the most beautiful old town squares I have seen anywhere. And um, certainly Prague is a great one. They have a beautiful one in, in Warsaw, although it was sort of rebuilt or recreated because it was destroyed in the war. Krakow has an amazing one. Um, of course, there's Red Square in Moscow. There's a lot of great ones, but I love this one. It is just absolutely fantastic. Let's take a little walk around, shall we? Streets, um, there's, the great thing about the old town here is there's no cars whatsoever, except early in the morning, they do allow uh, delivery trucks and such. So you will see making deliveries this is the only time of day though when you do see any cars here at all and uh, you can walk around the old town completely pedestrian free it's just so nice tremendous first impression um, we had heard some things about cruise ships <clears throat> this is a cruise port but there hadn't been any cruises uh, while we've been here so far luckily uh, and the crowds are pretty minimal it's really <laughs> and the weather is just fantastic my god why would you go to Spain or Greece or Italy in July <laughs> when you could come to Estonia weather is I don't know right now it's probably 65 degrees or something like that uh, while they're baking in Mediterranean Europe up here the weather is absolutely perfect it's gonna be a great day Perfect weather here in Tallinn today. Our first day in town. Couldn't have a better introduction. The town hall square. We're headed over to the town hall pharmacy, which is the oldest pharmacy in the world, supposedly continuously functioning pharmacy since I think the 15th century. Amazing. This is pretty neat. This is Old Thomas. This is the original weather vane of the, of the town hall here in Tallinn, which is very impressive. We're checking out right now. Now, this guy uh, is from dates from 1530. But this dropped from the uh, during a during a uh, Nazi air raid in what year 1944. Sorry, Soviet air raid in 1944. It dropped from the from the top of the town hall. This was the original weather thing, Old Thomas. This building is part of the in, uh, the main sort of entranceway. Dates to the 13th century. Beautiful room in the town hall here. Right in the middle of the town, town square. Free books. 
Kind of nice, huh? All right, let's go see what's going on. Oh, it's the Russian embassy. constructing it nearly 1300s and completed it in 1360 evangelical lutheran church very interesting and unique i haven't seen one exactly like this before have you jen like the whole structure of it is interesting yeah a lot of woodwork very interesting unique of Maya Smoke, oldest cafe in Tallinn, dates to 1864. A neat old place. Free chocolates too, chocolate bars, if you've got the Tallinn card. Pretty nice. Not too shabby. This is one of the better bathroom views I've had in a hotel. Rickswell Savoy Hotel in Tallinn. Look at this beautiful view of the old town we have here. Not too shabby. Our hotel, it's the Savoy Rickswell Boutique Hotel. I love this hotel. It is right inside the old town, but it's nice because it's an area where the taxis can drop you off, or if you have a car, you can park it here, but you're right in the old town and the cars are not permitted further up there. Uh, it's a beautiful place, I'm loving it. Bar. Breakfast area. They have here. Well, Savoy Hotel, Boutique Hotel in Tallinn's Old Town. Look at the view we have out the window. It's beautiful. Always a pleasure to see an English language bookshop.
pretty. Like that. This is the Kekin de Kok Bastion's Museum. And uh, this is a nice torture implement right here. There we are. And you can see a depiction here of how this worked. You've got the ankle screws and then the wrist screws, which are over here. You've also got a very nice thumb screw implement right here. Excellent. This is a hangman's sword, circa 1525. And I like what it says on here. It says in low German, the text on both sides of the executioner's blade say, God's mercy and allegiance are new every morning. When I raise my sword, I help the sinner into eternal life. Very nice. And here's where you'd have your head chopped off. Interesting little bit here about the Tallinn executioners. So this was seen in medieval times to be the most disreputable or dishonorable profession that one could have. And it says that most of the executioners in these parts were of German descent. And um, there's a couple of other interesting little tidbits I thought too, that they used blunt sword, swords, not sharp ones like they used in battle. And the swords had little holes at the bottom of them. That, so then when the, the executioner was striking his blow towards the neck of the condemned man, it would create a whistle, which they think had a sort of a deterrent or a <laughs> deterrent effect, I guess they say. It also notes that the profession was handed down from one generation to the next. And it was the Germans. Right, it, it, was, it was Germans, I mentioned that. The, exec, the executioners wore scarlet coats and it says that their touch was considered defiling. So nobody even literally wanted to be touched by these guys. Although it says that um, it wasn't considered a mortal sin and it says that sometimes after the condemned, uh, the sword was used to execute someone, they would bury the sword because it was seen as sort of a... The sword would become bloodthirsty, exactly, on its own. <laughs> such a neat museum because you get to walk along the city wall bastions and even if it's raining out as it is right now uh, you don't get wet there's also an interesting exhibit here about the importance of saunas of course they love sauna here just as they do in Finland and it says that the sauna attendants also perform minor surgeries and even bloodlettings and what else did they do Jen Hair, Serve they meals. Did cupping. They cut hair. They did cupping. Yeah, you know, like putting cups right. on the back. All kinds of important stuff, huh? And, but they were uh, disdained because they also procured services. Does that mean like prostitution? Also, oh, there were whorehouses too. Some of them, I guess. Nice. Yeah. And it says only the clergy didn't didn't go to them, right? Right. Supposedly the clergy didn't go. We don't know, for sure. Yeah. Did you see though that church? Not too often you see cafes that have a collection of medieval armor. Pretty neat. Great view from here too. Do you remember the Livonian War? I, sh <laughs> I sure as hell don't. Don't think this was taught in American schools, but in the late 16th century, over a period of about 20 years, by the way, some of these geezers behind me were people who have ruled uh, Estonia, but in the late 16th century you had Russians, Swedes, Danes, and Poles all fighting here for a period of 20 some odd years. And it, the, um, the Swedes got northern Estonia, including Tallinn, uh, the Poles got southern Estonia, and the Danes made off with Sarema, which is the biggest island. Interesting. Uh, it, Tallinn reached its peak like around the year 1400 or so. This area was uh, rich in salt, so believe it or not, salt, spices, and furs were the origin of a lot of the wealth of the city. Then we got the Northern War, another one which I do not remember at all. It took place 1700 through 1721, and that was when Russia, Denmark, and Saxony, which was early Germany, united in order to defeat the Swedes. So 1710, uh, according to the treaty, uh, Estonia was given up to Russia, so by that point uh, the Russians still had Finland, and they did until 1917 or so, but they lost Estonia.
So down here in the bastions, um, thousands of Estonians hid in 1944 when the Soviets were bombing. Uh, they dropped 3,000 bombs on the city of Tallinn. And thousands of people were rendered homeless. More than 500 died, but thousands were saved by coming and hiding down here. Really interesting. At the KGB prison cells museum in Tallinn, a lot of uh, gruesome history in here. Tallinn was independent during the, uh, the pre-war era. But um, starting between the summer of 1940 and autumn of 1941, the Russians deported 10,000 Estonians to prison camps. And out of the 8,000 persons who were arrested or executed, um, well, only 200 of them have survived. This Dominican convent is definitely worth a, uh, a visit. It dates to 1246. Uh, there were 12 brothers who were sent here, Dominican brothers who were sent here to form a, uh, a monastery. And uh, it was an active monastery until 1531 during the Protestant Reformation. The place was closed down as were all other monasteries and this is all that remains of it. But there's a few interesting buildings in there and uh, these monks had about 200 important manuscripts, which was a, which was a lot in 1246. It's kind of a neat little place, it's worth going to. And especially if you have the Talon card, you can enter for free. Right, so the Estonian Maritime Museum is in this fat Margaret's Tower. There's a bunch of these towers, I believe eight or nine of them um, in Tallinn. Fat Margaret's Tower is the one by the sea, and it was meant to, it was built there because it, they wanted to be, have a big, fat, imposing tower for ships that would be arriving in Tallinn. They wanted them to be impressed. I think it was, so there was a Queen Margaret of Denmark who originally ordered these fortifications to be made. I think in the 1200s, Denmark ruled here from early 1200 to about 1349 or so, something along those lines. But uh, by the way, this is a real nice, if you come to the Estonian Maritime Museum, which is a pretty nice museum, you can go to again on the Tallinn card. At the top, there's a cafe that has these beautiful views. But so why is it called Fat Margaret's Tower? I was, you know, obviously wanted to know this. First of all, who was Margaret and how fat was she? Of course, that's what you want to know, right? So, so that is sort of the historical portion of it is that there was a queen of Margaret in Denmark, but there's no indication that she was necessarily fat. However, there is a legend or a fable of uh, Margaret or Margarita as they called her and Herman. So these were two young lovers. I think she was a fisherman's daughter and he was like a shipbuilder's son or something like that. There were two lovers uh, here in Estonia and they had a midnight curfew and they missed their curfew one night and they ran in separate directions right after shortly after midnight they missed their curfew and Herman was supposedly tall and skinny and he turned into the Herman's Tower which is on the opposite end of the old town and she turned into fat Margaret's Tower so I guess she was fat he was tall and skinny both of them felt that they were unworthy of love because they were too ugly but Herman confessed his love to a couple of swans that are over by Tumpea Castle on the other side of Old Town and um, they made things happen. Don't know why they missed curfew. Don't know exactly how fat she was, but that is the information I have. Pretty interesting legend though, love it.
morning person in another country where there are no other morning people, <laughs> or very, very few. Man, there were some parties raging here last night in Tallinn. It was a Friday night, now it's Saturday morning. It's about 7.45 a.m. as you can see. The streets are, let's say, not exactly full. And uh, heading over to a viewing platform. I'll tell you, man, there were some raging people enjoying themselves last night. I like to have the windows open in the hotel just to get some fresh air. But uh, wow, karaoke and stuff like that. Sounded like a lot of fun. I wasn't awake for any of it. I like to you know, turn right. Always awake during daylight hours. Daylight is so late here in the summer. It's um, got late last night. I, was, I got dark last night. I'd say about 10:30 p.m. So I was in bed by probably 11:30, and up this morning at like 6:30, 6:45. But uh, final day in Tallinn. Gonna miss this place. Love it. Massive support for Ukraine here. Got a nice view of Tallinn here behind me. Thought I'd take the chance to give a little advice about visiting Tallinn. First of all, get the Tallinn card. As I've said before, for, for a relatively small city, it's absolutely astonishing, by the way, how many museums there are here and high quality ones, good ones too. I mean, for example, there's not one, but two maritime museums and they're both really interesting. Um, so get the Tallinn card because that gives you access to all of the attractions in the city, Caddy Org Palace, um, all of the viewing platforms, the churches, so many places where you can climb up high, like the Town Hall, St. Olaf's Church and get great views of the city. It also gives you free public transportation. It gives you also some free treats, free snacks, and good quality ones, believe it or not, too. Uh, the oldest cafe in the city, you get a free candy bar, a marzipan candy bar, and they're very good, too. Uh, there's another shop that gives you a bag of salted almonds, which are delicious for free, having the Tallinn card, so definitely get that. I would say if you want to see quite a lot of things here, try to stay for three days, which is what we're doing. Three days is a good amount of time. You do not need to rent a car here, so that's savings for you. We'd also heard there's a lot of cruise ships here, so I was concerned that is it gonna be really crowded? And you know, we're here in the peak high season of July and it's not very, very crowded. So had a wonderful visit here. Uh, really loved it. Get the Talon card, stay for three days, do everything. Uh, and come in July because it, it stays light here until 1030 at night. It's it's a fantastic time to come here and the weather's been perfect. It's, uh, you know, maybe 70 during the day, uh, low 70s. And then at night, it's nice and cool, comfortable for sleeping. So July, I think it's a perfect time to come here.